Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We've gone through the lunch break. And now, having had something to eat, we can pass to the following point. And this is the Polonia debate, which is titled What You Can't See from Warsaw, Polonia as Ambassadors of Good Name of the Republic of Poland. May I mention that the discussion today, which will present the future and past prize or the official prize award presentation gala in all the five categories will take place tomorrow. And now there is a discussion that accompanies us. It's a prize for the best Polonia initiative, which will praise our history overseas. The debate consists of two parts, a conversation with this year's winner, the past, the future 2022. The official promotion and presentation of the prize will take place tomorrow. And secondly, the central conference of the organizations that are part of the Seeds of History Network. This meeting presents the broadest possible scope of operation of representatives of the Polonia, the Polish diaspora in various parts of the world so that we could learn both the successes and the challenges that they face. It is a part of the Seeds of History Project 2.0 Fields of Knowledge, a project that was financed from the Chancellery of the President of the Council of Ministers as part of the Polonia and Poles Abroad 2022. May I invite you, members of this discussion, participants, to the panel to the agenda, please. Uh, let's give a round of applause to all our participants, also those you can't see because we work hybridly. We have the winner of the award. We've got Dr. Aleksandr, uh, Aleksandra Zhukovska. She is with us, Doctor of Humanities author of books published in Poland and the United States, former assistant to Melchior Vankovic. Uh, can you hear us, Dr. Mirowska? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Welcome. A big round of applause is really due. May I also welcome Dr. Wucja Mirowska Kopecz, teacher and representative of the American Polonia, president of the Polish Association in the US. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And may I invite to the stage Elzbieta Barras, representative of the British Polonia and president of the Polish Educational Society. May I have also Andrzej Henke with us. He is representative of the Austrian Polonia, president of the Federation of Poles in Austria and president of the World Federation of Polish diaspora support. The conversation will be chaired by Mr. Sławomir Budzik, a radio journalist and producer, film producer, and representative of the American Polonia, connected to Beyond Radio in Chicago. Please take your seats. Due to the strategic nature of the project, 
that we have run for a year in our foundation. And may I invite the president of the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation, Mr. Paweł Kurtyka, to present the concept and the idea of our project. The floor is yours, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, present with us both here and online, remotely. Let me welcome very cordially all and sundry who will be listening to this panel in a moment. May I also thank our dear members of the panel for being with us, for accepting this challenge answering the difficult questions of our moderator. I hope the questions are going to be hard. If they are not, we're going to get bored. It is now my role to inform you about the strategic questions and issues that the decision of the foundation is supported on. We started last year the Seeds of History. Now we're in the second edition of that project and it's really conducted along two lines. On the one hand, the purpose is to build a network of organizations that work with us, with Janusz Kurtyka Foundation. This is the Seeds of History net. And together with those organizations that build the net is setting up of that loosely connected conglomerate whose common denominator is the consent to the Polonia, that's the Polish diaspora and its organizations being the ambassadors of Polishness. So that abroad they represent the interests of the Republic and consciously influence their environment wherever they live. They make impact on their friends, colleagues, wherever they live, and also make this impact on their children and grandchildren. You can see it best in the United States. They're the third or fourth generation is, for natural reasons, more connected to the country where they live. They feel they're Americans, especially that America has all that system of Americanization. The state has uh, delivered on their promises of Americanizing its society, for which reason they are losing their contact with Polishness, with the purposes of the Republic of Poland. And we want to stimulate that awareness and also work on that awareness. In the first edition, we only worked with the organizations in the US and Canada, but now in the second edition, we are going more broadly and the scope of that project also now extends to European countries. Uh, the UK, uh, Switzerland, France, Austria, Germany. The organizations receive what we create, the product of our foundation, the books, that the foundation translates and publishes abroad. On the one hand, it's high quality tested product, uh, scientific books that are now available, not in Polish. These you can buy without us, but translated into foreign languages. And we encourage those organizations to participate in the process of distribution of those books so that the message contained therein could reach the Polish diaspora, those people from the Polish diaspora who no longer speak Polish, and also Americans, Brits, Germans, and so on, and so on. We want that loose cooperation based on that common denominator that I've described to you. And in this long-term project, we want to build the promotion, this driving wheel of promotion of the Polish history 
in the world through our organizations, through our circles, through all the people who believe and feel that they are ambassadors of Polishness. That's a purpose of the project, and I hope it's going to develop in future as well as it has, it did last year and it does uh, now. Well, let's now get into the debate, and the debate is about to start. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Veronika Gawlinska, and I coordinate the Zierna History Project. In a moment, we will show you a presentation on the project, and Veronika will present it. I hope that it will fine-tune my earlier words. As Mr. President said, this is a project we initiated in 2021. Its idea is to create a network of Polonia organizations in the Polish diaspora that will build the good image of Poland abroad and promote Polish history among Americans, Canadians, and the Polish diaspora in those countries. The target group are Poles living in the US and or Canada, people who were brought up in Poland and those who were brought in the foreign countries as well as uh, foreigners interested in the Polish history. During the first round of the project in 2021, we obtained 10 partners, two from Canada. They are the Canadian Polish Congress Toronto District and Polish National Union Branch 1, named after Marshal Józef Piłsudski. From the US, we had eight partner organizations, including Alliance of Polish Clubs in the US, Polish Consulate General in New York, Pasi Edu Organization, the Polish Cultural Foundation in Clark Township, Polish Heritage Center in Panna Maria in Texas, Józef Piłsudski Institute of America, and also Polish Supplementary School Council of America, and the Committee Conservation of Cutting Monument and Historic Objects. The second action we undertook in this project was the shipment of historic books to our organizations. These were no chance books. These were books by the winners of the Janusz Kurtyka Prize in the first, second, and third round. They were sent in Polish and in English to have them distributed, of course, as free gifts to people, institutions, to other organizations that would make it possible to promote Polish history abroad. So we have sent the following books. The winner of the Janusz Kurtyka Award, that is The Touch of the Katyn by Professor Tadeusz Walsza. Here we see the English book cover, Encounter with Katyn. The winner of the second edition of the Janusz Kurtyka um, competition, the Wielka Wojna Polaków by Professor Andrzej Chwalba. That is the Great War of the Poles, the people of Poland at war. And here we can see this book in the English language. And uh, the book about uh, Damian Komarkowski, um, and this is Lwów or Lviv, two uprisings, 1918. And moreover, we have also sent uh, a publication uh, of the Katyn Massacre, current research, uh, by uh, pr Professor Philip Musio and by Dr. Damian Bembnowski. And the third activity undertaken within the framework of the Seeds of History project was organizing meetings with historians. Those were online meetings in uh, both in Polish and in the English language with the, the use of remote simultaneous interpretation. Therefore, this uh, meeting was available live both for English and Polish speaking participants and also due to this both um, english and polish speaking persons could uh, um, ask post questions on chat and hence uh, our materials um, were made uh, 
much easier available. And the first meeting that we organized was the one that was done with the Union of the Polish Clubs in the USA. That was a meeting with uh, Professor Hvalba. The second meeting was done together with Pasi Idiu, and that was uh, a meeting with Professor Volsha. And the third meeting was a conference that was attended by experts, by the members of the Polish diaspora organizations uh, that um, were that joined the network uh, within the first edition and we received uh, the financing for this uh, project from the chancellor the prime minister within the framework of the competition polish diaspora for polls and uh, we decided to continue this project uh, under a different name that is the fields of knowledge seeds of history 2.0 we decided to develop the uh, to expand the uh, uh, network of organizations and therefore we have been joined by our colleagues uh, from the uk austria switzerland and so far we have started cooperating with um, the british organizations the polish educational society the polish association in great britain the polish social and cultural association in london and also we started cooperating with the federation of Poles in austria and with the world federation of uh, polish sports and um, and in the second edition, we're also dispatching our books, uh, but uh, in the Polish, English, and German languages. Here we can see the cover of the book by Professor Hvalbe in the German language and uh, a book in the German language by Dr. Damian Markovsky. And as far as other activities are concerned, we are going, or going we're going to organize meetings with the historians. We're going to have a web page on the Polish history in the English and German languages. Also, we're going to have a database on the Polish um, um, faculties at the universities in the USA. And also, we are going uh, to uh, present the awards within the category of the Polish diaspora and Poles abroad, uh, past and uh, future. Thank you for your kind attention. And we would like to welcome our guest from Delaware so far and so close. At the same time, together with us, we have Mrs. Alexandra Zhukovska. Hello, thank you for joining us. And I understand it's still before noon in Delaware. Congratulations. Tomorrow, we're going to present the awards. And here in Sulayovic in Museum, as we're here, but we already know that the winner of that prestigious award is you. And hence, I've been thinking, how is it when we hear about the Seeds of History project and it is uh, meant to, to generate such great patriots as your husband? And uh, how is it that uh, for 27 years, your husband has um, turned to, to become a true Polish patriot. Could you please tell us more about your husband with great joy? And uh, my husband did not speak Polish, but he did become a Polish patriot. And I think that first and foremost, he, he was very much open to other cultures. He had spent and he was uh, working under contract for the American oil company for 14 years, then he was working in Norway, in London. So he used to travel all around the world and he had beautiful attitude to other cultures. So when I met him, I, I say that um, I did not migrate to America. I simply married. I still have my little beloved flat in the Mokotov district in Warsaw. And we used to, to travel to Poland once or twice a year. And we was, used to stay for a month or so in Zakopane. And uh, my husband used to take pictures of fences in Zakopane being so marvelous. And then he started delving into the Polish related topic so close to my heart. And um, I have friends, I read a lot, I write books myself about the fate of people uh, with uh, the stigma of the war in the past, in the background. And so he became very much interested and I trans was explaining uh, him things I wanted him to know. I started translating him things I wanted him to know. And if, if we had a dispute with the acquaintance, I was not explaining him things, but he knew about the Yalta, Yalta and so on and so forth. And the untold story of Polish is my recent books. He said, um, he, he told me that, um, remember that that was a difficult piece of information for him to absorb that Poles 
um, um, uh, Poles uh, were um, sentenced to death for helping the Jews, if they were helping the whole families or individually. And people beyond Poland did not uh, know about it. And uh, if a German was killed, and uh, then uh, people were being um, snatched from the streets, sweeped from the streets, and 100 people would die. And uh, when we were joining we were joining NATO. He was very much interested and he was very much following those uh, events. And because uh, I live in the state of Delaware and Joe Biden, who used to be the senator, he was very much against that idea. And my husband sending, sending letters to him and not just letters, but it was one letter. And then he would receive a reply for him. And uh, we in, we were in touch with Jan Novak Jezerinsky, who was very much uh, following closely. And we were sending all the copies of the correspondence to him. And my husband uh, wrote uh, to a number of um, publishing houses uh, with um, his reasoning for Poland, um, uh, um, why Poland should join NATO. And um, in fact, Jan Novak Jezerinsky, in his book about Polish uh, way to NATO, he writes that uh, he would like to have um, Alexander and uh, a person like her husband in each state of the US, and then there would be nothing to worry about. And another uh, important person, uh, Senator Hutchinson from Texas, uh, she was also against NATO, uh, Polish membership in NATO, but all states had to be positive. So Jan Novak Jerenski said, uh, tell her husband to do something, because uh, then we were in Texas, and he said, uh, please ask uh, her husband to collect as many signatures as possible of Poles and non-Poles. What did my husband do in Texas, in Houston? At that time, he had a contract uh, with uh, a European company, and he was uh, going from home to home, from person to person, and he collected uh, approximately 100 signatures. And M Senator Hutchinson saw that so many people of her a constituency were asking her to vote in favor of the Polish membership in NATO, she voted accordingly. So we can see how important it is today when we are facing the threat from the East and it's a real threat. And your work uh, of, of your husband to you, as far as, uh, of, as, far as uh, Polish uh, accession to NATO is concerned, you see how much fruit your work has borne after so many years. And your husband, we might say, it was very much um, active, and he was uh, very much active in this Polish-American house. But I would like to ask you about a story that most probably most uh, tourists in the US know about. That is a story, I don't know whether anyone of you here in the room was in South Dakota in the US. In South Dakota, they are still chiseling out, hammering out this gigantic uh, monument, crazy horse, uh, that is not far from uh, the Mount Rushmore. And the main sculptor is uh, Mr. Korczak Zhukovsky. And when I started reading about Mr. Zhukovsky, then, of course, uh, you can easily combine the two names, and Korczak Zhukovsky turns out to be your relative. So what are your relations with Mr. Zhukovsky? After all, he is now a symbol of uh, Indians, of not only of the Apache tribe, but also the uh, Dakota and other tribes uh, that uh, create this foundation for the crazy horse monument in the US. Uh, and every single tourist would have seen that place by now. Yes, I'm very proud, of course. Korczak, uh, he received that um, as uh, from his house uh, but he used to be uh, he, he he the brother of my grandfather traveled to the us and the child was born a boy and um, he and his wife died in a car accident and their son um, there was um, traveling from family to family and uh, but then he became that famous sculptor and he did take part in the Mount Rushmore project uh, an outstanding person a beautiful person and uh, whenever I tell the story to Americans uh, they're amazed and in America of course they uh, know about the crazy horse uh, project and Americans have sent me to us on a scholarship a project I was still unmarried at that time because I just came from Poland and I really loved it and I uh, liked it a lot, and um, I, uh, Kortrak uh, had died by that time already, but I spoke to Rose, his wife and children, and we're still in touch, all the time we're still in touch. And then together with my husband, I visited them 
a couple of times, uh, up teens times, uh, and uh, we were traveling around the reservations for two and a half months. And then uh, I by and by started writing a book. And initially I was so very much proud. It was with tears in my eyes that I was uh, writing about my relative doing the job that he actually started it and uh, and I, I i thought perhaps you could write about him i mean he was my uncle after all my uncle what would he know about the indians and then i became a subscriber to indian country today and uh, dakota times so i started reading about uh, the indians and i started traveling and i started writing the book and so uh, it was published in the english language uh, by the American uh, heritage, and uh, there is uh, a word of thank you um, and acknowledgement to, to the Apache tribe, because both the publisher and me, we thanked the Apache uh, people, and uh, they were reviewing the book, and also, and this is, and by the way, that uh, book was also very well, beautifully published in Poland under the title "The Open Wound of America" by the published by a publishing house that no longer exists. Anyway, I am in touch with their children. They're of course adults uh, by now, like all of us. I'm also very much an adult person, and uh, this project is being continued in some in people in Poland are being sarcastic and saying, "Is it a never-ending story?" And uh, they're doing it in on purpose for tourists alone. And I'm saying, no, it's uh, actually in the making. The profile is already ready. The head of the horse uh, is almost done. And of course, uh, the tourists are admitted only on specific periods of uh, uh, times and days, uh, so as not to inflict any harm of this uh, a monument because it takes uh, climbing and um, we need to take care of it. So I'm very much in touch with them all the time. And uh, I am very proud of that project. The crazy horse. Indeed, this is a monument everyone must see, and it is done by was done by a pole. And due to your books and your publications, now we can know more, and also Americans may know more about um, a Polish sculptor. And by the way, he was uh, the one who uh, did uh, the Płocki monument in New York. So undoubtedly, he is very much an interesting person, and he is very much an outstanding person. However, what is very well known as far as your life is concerned uh, is your relation with uh, uh, Melchior Vankovic, and everything started with Vankovic. But once I read that you used to be an assistant to uh, Vankovic, and then it turned out that you used to know each other for two and a half years, and you then took over the entire heritage of our great reporter, uh, writer, I was thinking, how is it that a young girl at those days, uh, you were a young student, you were writing your MA thesis, you were in touch with Merchior Vankovic, a genius, and then you received it all, anything that uh, you got it all that could uh, um, be received from him. And now you are the most beautiful ambassador of his. Well, it all started when I was a four-year student of Polish studies. My uh, subject of my master thesis was a uh, report press report and Vankovic was the key figure. My father was a historian. He gave me books to read. He was very happy. And writing that, I wanted to guess what to do. But I selected Vankovic after Kosak Szczotska and I wrote a letter to him after months that I was writing my MA thesis on the University of Łódź. And I have questions to him. He invited me to his place over for 5 p.m. This was 1972, May, and there were great book fairs in Warsaw. And I was there on time. And a man opened to me. I knew Vankovic from photographs, from appearances on TV, and I saw that tall man, not really very thin, with his unkempt hair, and I was quite surprised. And he says, did you read my books? And I said, yes, obviously, I've read them all. I've got here my works, show it to me, because I can't have more time for students or journalists than 45 minutes. I've got health problems, and I want to finish a book. 
and that's what he said. He started reading it, and Magda Karavan, his um, home servant, brought coffee, and he kept reading. And I only had 10 minutes. He read all those seven works and said, hey, you know how to think critically. You wrote about the things that I've already forgotten. Now, come on, stay. He called to the dormitory so that I had lodging. And he started telling me some stories so unbelievable. Well, he trusted me, a young girl. He got to know my family. He told me about war and the pen, Voina Ipuro, where he shared his information, how different nations uh, inform about the war, what words they use. And just imagine a reviewer of a writer of 80. He shows that a reviewer had to write it. And well, the reviewer wrote that Vankovic didn't write anything about the Eastern Front. And Vankovic said, I was in Monte Cassino, second core. I have no materials about it. We'll find a researcher for you, somebody to find all those materials. And he keeps telling that to me. And the 45 minutes turned into several hours. And he said, well, I really got tricked. And he was doing it for the maestro, Alexander Godlewski uh, Horodyski, one of those names was a pseudonym. And he said he was doing it for literature. He started bringing very good uh, materials. The book got bigger and it went to the publisher. The publisher arrived in three weeks and said, look, we have a problem because Mr. Kotecki Horodyski believes he's a co-author and alphabetically you'll be the second co-author. And Vankovic goes like, what? Six months later, he agreed he would be second on the cover. Finally, after about a year, and that writer says, when you open War and Pen, it says, cooperation of uh, Alexander, and you always sign contracts in such moments. Vankovic then told me he had trouble with health. He wanted to write about writing as such. Whether you have it, you wait for some inspiration, what conditions do you need? And for him, it was work, 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 not inspiration, but hard work. And he really needed to give some examples of other artists, writers, and how they look at their process of writing. Just imagine that he gave me that list of what he wanted to do and that I took some autobiographic books and diaries that I found quotations and send it to him on special fiches. The evening was over and he said, please join me tomorrow for book signing in front of Power Kultury and that he would pay me per hour. And I said, no, I don't need money. Okay, if you don't take money, then we quit. And it lasted for a whole year, bringing all those materials. Whether he paid me a lot, I said, for all the money that I earned there, I bought a beautiful sheepskin. Beautiful. Also, what happened on that night? He said, you had your questions, and I'm only talking about the book I'm not answering. OK, take the first file from my archive, and that's it. It was a proof of trust. Yes, of course. My MA was very well written. And then we agreed that I would write my doctorate there. Uh, he was very glad. And the second volume he dedicated to Alexandra Magis Zhukovska, MA, my secretary, without whose uh, devotion this book would be even worse. So I got the greatest 
are present you can have a dedication in a book doctor now a great present is that you did everything so that Vankovic, after his uh, tour of the US could return to America. And I don't know in how many hundreds of libraries you can find Vankovic. I wrote various books and I said, I've got to write about Vankovic. And my publisher who publishes those popular science books, I said that if we want to write about Vankovic, I said he was a Hemingway. He had personality. He was no member of any political groups or factions. Everyone believed him to be an alien. Imagine somebody who wrote Natropach Smentka was never nominated for any prize. No, nobody ever nominated him because he was a member of no factions. Then in emigration, the author of the Battle of uh, Monte Cassino, Jelena Krateza, didn't receive any prize because nobody nominated him. The writers who had books still in typescript received them. He lived through his 80th birthday and he never received any literary prize. And that's a very complicated thing. I write about it because I wrote multiple books about Vankovic. Now, you mentioned this American publication. Well, my publisher published that book. And you can see it. Everything is the online scientific libraries. Well, more than 800 libraries in the world have that book. And I'm very glad because he returned to the US, to libraries. And I was very glad to see it because when I was leaving the American Polonia, was not fully happy about it. He was writing books and well, writing books, most of the people who write books uh, do it for honor, not for money. Zofia Vankovic, his wife, cleaned houses. There are those two volumes of his letters that his wife and I edited. So there are some shocking descriptions of him forced to fight for every dollar to, to, to cope, to make it. And these things are not generally known. I very much wanted his books to be published in America, not only books about him, and veterans in New York sponsored the translation of the Battle of Monte Cassino. There is also a publisher, but uh, some uh, things have not been signed with his great grandson. Vankovic had that great grandson, so I'm not telling too much. Fingers crossed. No, we really keep fingers crossed. Vankovic at this stage is already present. And this is something that you have done, you have achieved. We will close with Vankovic because there'll be an exceptional anniversary. But one more word about your husband. This is an extremely interesting theme because it's also about the following book, following item that you wrote, the connections between you and Zhukovsky, the sculptor we know. But your husband was connected to a star, not only of Swedish cinema, but also Hollywood, uh, multiple Oscars, Casablanca is something. Everyone's seen the greatest classic of the cinema. It's precisely here where Ingram Baham played and she is your family. And I understand that thanks to these family ties, you could write another book which remains a hit. Ingrid Bergman privately. My husband told me that I was so happy. Great actress. She had three um, Oscars, Isabella Rossellini. When I find something interesting, I want to write something. After 20 years of marriage, I said, Perhaps I write a family story about Ingmar Bergman. And he was so happy. He always did English editing of my books. 
and there's this passage okay write about it write about it i really really appreciated that he read my books before things went to print his comments were very wise so ingrid bergman's father and my husband's grandmother were siblings so very close family and as he traveled the world a lot i have beautiful meetings mentioned in this book in dovia and london photographs it's a great tale of an aunt because all the publications have a lot of prattling of gossip about uh, marriages divorces and this tale has beautiful reviews and recently a journalist from the Vatican said, what else can you write about Ingrid Bergman? And he wrote that this is a beautiful and elegant tale. Well, just the way I, I do it. It's as if you played on a piano. So my husband was very happy. No, sorry. I gave him this typescript to read. He was to correct it, to read it. I left it in his study and I'm looking at him and he had tears in his eyes and said, you wrote it so beautifully. That was the most beautiful review I've ever had. So this book is here in Poland, Ingrid Bergman privately. And if I could take two more seconds of your time, thanks to my husband, I also wrote another book, Traveling with Naukowska. It was published by Purdue University Press in the US. We had that cat adopted in Texas. She followed us. She followed us to Indian reserves. And there's a book about Susie the cat. Polish podróże z moją kotką. Yeah, cat lovers really appreciate that book, but plenty of prizes. Polish pen club uh, brought the Golden Cross of uh, Merit, then Paderewski medal from Swap, Gloria Artis, Witness of History from IPN, Culture and Heritage, Polish Armenians. You could go on listing those on end. In Delwa, you also received that. Please tell me which prices you enjoy most, which are most precious to you, which were the greatest joy. Oh, they are all a great joy. The more I get old, the more I like them. You can't ask for reviews. All you can do is you can pray. So I really, really appreciate that. Delaware State Prize, where Biden wrote me a long letter only one person receives it a year that was sent from my publisher and i really enjoy all of them i also love the armenian one because i took to my heart that story and i had the opportunity to write about armenians and so on those are very painful um, uh, armenians uh, have um, experienced painful history just like us and uh, now we're um, within the project um, of Poles and the Polish diaspora abroad. So this is uh, the most recent reward. How have you accept, How have you experienced it? Well, I was very much deeply moved and overjoyed. Something very good, very, very much. Uh, um, I'm happy to, I know that officially I'm still due to receive it. Yes, we, you are just about to receive that award very soon. But due to your activities, we can talk today about the Polish diaspora and we can talk about your activities as of ambassadors. Thank you very much. Dr. Alexander Zhukovska Bowen has been with us and is staying with us. And now we are moving on to the discussion and we're going to talk about um, the following. I've been thinking whether perhaps we will talk to Wutsimir Skokobic, the head of the Union of Polish Clubs. Uh, I hope you hear us and we can see you. And uh, it's great. And we are here all together in the studio, so to speak. So speaking about, about Polish matters, the first question is, do you 
feel that there is this borderline, us and them, the Poles here in Poland and us Poles abroad. That is the Poles, but uh, not in Poland. Elżbieta, what do you feel about it? I will try. So do we feel this uh, certain border uh, line between ourselves? I don't think we have time for that because everyone is so very much busy with whatever we do as um, emigrants. I live in the UK and uh, we are also social activists. We also work actively in charity organizations. And in the case of the uh, Polish Educational Society, we are people of education and we're trying to reconcile our activist activities and social work with our business life Monday through Friday. So I do not feel this borderline. I never felt it. I've never been seeing uh, them and us as something separate. We have a link with Poland. And in the most cases, this is a courtesy call, so to speak. We wish each other all the very best uh, on the New Year's Eve and for the new academic year. And then on, at Christmas time, Christmas time, and we obviously send best wishes. And then uh, the Easter, the day of the flag, the day of the Polish diaspora. Those are the big holidays that we're proud proud to celebrate when abroad. And by the end of the school year, we thank everyone for good cooperation. So that is how it looks in brief. But when we are running bigger projects and when we're talking about important things every single time, there is feedback. So we can rely on our partners we can rely on the financial and um, meritorious support that is being given to us and we're not seeing the difference between us and them no it's um, we're just all activists we're all support and we want to be part and we are part of uh, poland and uh, the uk is closer the us is further away uh, dr Minosko, uh, Kopec, do you uh, feel that there is this borderline us and them or not really i would agree that um, uh, i would uh, say that um, that here in the US, uh, that the immigration that was um, in the 1980s and then the 90s, uh, that we still feel to be part of Poland. And um, the fact is that uh, so many members uh, of the um, um, immigration started working in the organization of the Polish diaspora, just like in my case, I joined uh, the Union of the Polish Clubs and I'm the head of one. I'm very proud to be the head of it. So due to such types of activities, so we have been more connected uh, with Poland. And I know that in the case of the UK, it's so much easier because it's merely an hour and a half of flight time and you're already back in Poland. But still, the Poles in the USA many times fly to Poland. They send their children to Poland uh, for summer holidays. So there is this link. There is emotional link and there are family ties with Poland. And I think that in Poland, there is a somewhat uh, insufficient understanding of our situation in the US. And this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, and Andrzej, well, Austria is the closest, definitely. And um, it's just around the corner. So is there this uh, borderline between us and them? Well, I, I not only act uh, and work in Austria, but also in Poland. And I run an association in Poland. I run uh, an association for the promotion of the city of uh, Szczerk and with the Beskid mountain range. I'm very much uh, linked uh, with the uh, Silesian region. We also have a center of water sports, so I keep moving between Austria and Poland. And um, it just takes me to travel 300, 400 or 500 kilometers. So there is no sense of them and us. However, I'm thinking about the Polish diaspora and I see there is a difference. I see that the Polish diaspora that analyzes its attitude to Poland in patriotic terms, that there is no such division for them and us, but there is 
a great difference uh, in terms of uh, the standard of life, um, political matters, um, and uh, economy. The post-accession Polonia in Austria is different. And we think that approximately 160, 190,000 Poles live in Austria. And um, one third of them, those are Austrians of Polish descent, of uh, Polish nationality. The other third of them, those are Poles who live and work, and uh, they are already mm, a part of Austria, but they still have Polish citizenship. And they have the roots in Austria, they have their children in Austria. And the third part is uh, most uh, difficult to, to define, they keep on moving between the two countries. So uh, speaking about pat patriotism, it's, I think it's clear they're all patriots, but now the situation is very dynamic in Poland as far as uh, politics is concerned, and we can see how the Polish diaspora is voting. Yes, we're going to talk about this specific feature of the uh, Polish diaspora. I can see that in the US clearly. Okay, let's go back to the US, uh, to Dr. Alexander Zhukovska. So do you have this feeling of um, difference uh, of what is happening in the US and what is happening here, how you operate as a representative of the Polish diaspora and the way Poles work here in Poland? Well, the United States of America host wonderful foundations like the Kościuszko Foundation, and they are offering wonderful scholarships, and uh, they're also supporting Polish youth and um, um, helping uh, for them to travel to Poland to learn Polish and so on and so forth. So those are, there is a Polish Heritage Association, and again, those are the, po the, the students of Polish descent, and they may apply for financial support because it's quite expensive to study in the US, and I a part of a management board of um, this organization. And I think it's important, it's good. And perhaps because I live in the state of the Delaware and there is no Polish community there, but everyone does whatever he or she can. I write books and I wish to reach out to as many people as possible. And uh, when there are meetings and uh, there are many diplomats from Poland who uh, come to and attend meetings and I am following your publications by great authors in the English language, but instead of giving me gadgets, balloons and whatnot, give me a book, but not only to me, give the books to Americans so that they just uh, look through such a book and they perhaps they would know something. Even if they shelve it, there is still some knowledge staying. As uh, I was writing a book, uh, uh, I was writing about Warsaw Uprising and um, it's quite a shocking fragment in that book. And I wanted to show something, but I was writing that book being not in Poland, but in America. And at the end, I added that I addressed 20 Americans with a question, what do you know about the Polish rising? And, uh, and uh, out of 20, 18 Americans said that the Warsaw Rising was uh, the ghetto uprising that uh, there was um, people were trying uh, to escape using sewage canals and so on and so forth. So the world, we think that the world knows, but it turns out it's not really the case. If we go to, uh, we actually need to promote our history using small, big and mid-sized companies, because if we do not speak, the world will not know about us. We need to have books and movies, short and long, full feature and short feature. We need to create this culture to be proud. We need to show our history. And yes, it was with Frederick Chopin. I don't know how about places in the UK and Austria, but in the US, Chopin was heavily promoted by the French so much that everyone thought, and maybe most Americans still think that Chopin was an Amer a French composer, but I'm not sure. Maybe there is the, I, I still think that there is this borderline between us and them. If we look at different initiatives, of course, all of us try hard. And of course, we don't want such a borderline to exist. We want it to either disappear or to be non-existent altogether. However, as we speak about the Polish diaspora, as Andre was speaking about many different diverse groups in the US and Likewise, uh, here we have many different communities of uh, Poles, and some people have been there since uh, for many generations, some are new. 
But still, in each generation, there is this common denominator that we want to be closer to each other, but there's also something that separates us. Just like Dr. Alexander Zhukovsky says that there are fewer initiatives these days, and meetings like today's are needed so much. They're so important because they unite us, that we can meet, we can talk, and we can say, what is it that we actually want? What is it that we actually miss? Is it all great and wonderful? Or maybe um, Poland is already being very well perceived and understood. But Andrzej, what do you miss? Because you are the closest to Poland and perhaps your needs are the smallest. So let us begin with uh, the small range of needs. Well, I shall go, I'm, I'm going to disappoint you. I have great appetites and expectations are great. And I'll say that uh, we have Yes, I agree that we need uh, um, a greater network, Polish network. We need this network. We need this exchange. And let me give you this example. This year, we are organizing, running a project that is the Polish of the, uh, the Polish uh, uh, Culture Week in Vienna. And our needs are not that big, but still, we have not received any support that is required for that. We haven't got even one fifth of what is needed to run this project. We're still running this project and we're going to run this project anyway due to cooperation with many different organizations and foundations. And we are going to use the synergy effect. So as uh, uh, Sometimes uh, Polish diaspora organizations say they cannot act because there is no funding, but perhaps we shall act in a different way. We can use discussions and panel discussions. We can meet um, our colleagues, and this is how um, these meetings are very much they are very much enriching for us, as you say. I'm very pleased that I can take part in this meeting. We can uh, find out so much more about each other and exchange opinions. However, as, as far as the needs are concerned, let me put it this way. We need to understand, to realize the whole scale of this problem. No, actually, let me go back. Um, so how Poles perceive the Polish diaspora, how the Polish diaspora perceives Poles. So more often than not, I hear uh, that the Polish diaspora is very critical of Poles and Poland. They say, what are you doing out there? Why are you so traditional? Why are you not being progressive? So that part of the Polish diaspora that has become more cosmopolitan um, or been Europeanized in Europe, they do not understand our needs. They do not understand our national spirit. We do not understand their our um, need for national identity. And they lost it. On the other hand, I hear the other criticism. The Poles say, you in the West, if you want to speak, at least do not vote. You live abroad after all. We are the Polish citizens. We live abroad, but still we have our civil rights, so we will vote. So there is this dissonance, and it is dangerous. And if we are looking at um, the number of uh, 20 to 21 million Poles and how Poles and how this Polish diaspora because of course not all of them have uh, the civil right to vote, but how they behave at the time of election. It's quite a dramatic point of time, even especially now in Poland, uh, when we need to show our identity and we need to bear witness of uh, our identity. This is important. And the Polish diaspora uh, is voting at the level of 500 to 700,000 people for the entire world, which is such a poor result. And so much more needs to be done here and uh, cooperation within the framework of us, our organizations, is very important. And uh, I am not even uh, trying uh, to talk about the, the Polonia, not in the Atlantic uh, sphere, but uh, in Central and Eastern Europe, the Polish diaspora was uh, being followed by the secret energy, and uh, the Polish organizations were being established for some specific purpose, but now, we understood that um, we understand that, that uh, we need to work uh, um, horizontally and not vertically. And once we start working horizontally, uh, that will help us a lot. Now the UK, Elżbieta, what are your expectations and what are your real needs? So as there is no border between us and them, there are no needs 
we are faring well. I would love to say that. Uh, in fact, it's quite on the contrary. This is a well without any bottom, and the, there is a, a plethora of needs. And for many years, the Polish diaspora was uh, doing very well without any uh, without any help, and uh, indeed the Polish diaspora was infiltrated uh, um, also in, in the UK due to the proximity of countries. So that meant that there was a certain level of distrust to the uh, Polish diaspora, or maybe there was uh, no willingness uh, to reach out for help. And so perhaps there was indeed this border that was being created uh, between uh, the uh, UK and Poland as far as the Polish community is concerned. And uh, if um, I were to pinpoint a couple of needs, uh, perhaps we need uh, to have better understanding, better understanding of our needs. Because we talk and the dialogue is uh, taking uh, place on many different levels. And uh, we might think that we understand each other very well, that we speak to many organizations and state organs and state bodies. And the, the impression is that the we are being heard and we're being understood and that we're going to receive what we need, not only the money, but we, I'm talking about the type of training that we need, I'm talking about some substantive help that we need. But then once we start our daily activities, it turns out that we're all alone, that we have to get by on our own. And if we take into consideration the number of Polish students in the Polish uh, Saturday, a Polish diaspora schools on Saturdays, it's from 10 to 15 percent of uh, students who actually attend Polish uh, Saturday schools. And this is the type of aid that we still need to receive. We do not know how to address this problem, how to encourage a great number of young Poles to attend Polish diaspora schools on Saturdays. And this is how they would also uh, take care. Um, the uh, Polish uh, culture and would become ambassadors of the Polish culture. So the question is how to reach out to those who are not yet with us. So talking about this um, frontier and how to address this uh, border line and uh, how to, uh, to change the situation so that the olden days never return. But I would like to return to Dr. Mirovskavovic because um, and the situation in Chicago, the the the, the general the consulate of the Republic of Poland was a symbolic organization, and the Poles used to, to either go to this consulate or were avoiding the consulate. And so many years after 1989, I still see many people who. Um, associate the consulate with the Polish authorities, and they still have a grudge, have a, a grudge against it. So it still exists as a symbol. It's a living symbol. So what uh, can we say about uh, Chicago being the symbol of the Polish diaspora? I actually even do not know what to say about it because our experience of our organization and uh, my personal experiences such that I may speak about cooperation with uh, the Consular General of the Republic of Poland with the beginning of the 1990s. I wasn't there before that. I know that earlier there were such situations as they were presented in Austria. There was invigilation and, of course, you know what the general attitude was. And Polonia, especially here in Chicago, in the US is highly patriotic, very right wing, for which reason they didn't really want to have any relations to the Polish consulate. And the last years, we've had great representatives of Ministry of Foreign Affairs who are consuls and deputy consuls cooperation with them, to us at least, is great. And there is also this other side, the logistic logistics, issuing passports, for example. And now an anecdote, perhaps, since my arrival, I keep on renewing my passport every 10 years. I pay a lot for that, but 
I'm a Polish citizen and I should have such a passport. And as a Pole, I want to go to Poland. Many people have American passport and they say I'm a citizen of the world because I'm American. And the case was much more serious when the pandemic arrived and you could really come to Poland only if you had your Polish passport. At the same moment, huge queues started. There was plenty of noise. Why the consulate is not working efficiently as it should. The Chicago Polonia here in this major area in Illinois and in the city of Chicago, that Polonia is about 3 million people, quite a number. And now our consulate also provides services to some neighboring states. So just imagine the needs are huge, the needs are vast, and the staff is not that big. I don't want to provide excuses for the consulate, but I just try to have a holistic picture at it because speaking of all the patriotic things, meetings, Polish visits, I'd say that I agree with the previous speaker that when Polish visitors arrive, we have fantastic talks, but people, you know, just nod their head and yes, go on, do it. And nothing results from that. Nothing, absolutely. In most cases, I say it uh, from the experience of my organization, the Association of Polish Clubs, which is going to be 95 next year. So I know that this is one of the oldest organizations in the US, especially here in this area. So I must say that just like the situation of the Polonia, also the situation of our organization is changing. The last two years of the pandemic had the aftermath of technical difficulties for our organization. Unlike some other organizations, we don't have these business back offices. We're an organization that is 100% voluntary and organize events for the Polonia and all those events, like, for example, the Constitution Parade on the 3rd of May with 20, 30,000 people sometimes participating in some years. Well, it's also organized only by volunteers. And that's a project that calls for plenty full effort. And most of us work, nearly everyone. And we can uh, just spend a limited number of time doing that. Speaking of the parade, the 3rd of May parade, usually when this moment is coming of the parade, as a journalist, I hear, have they heard, have they heard you? Has Poland helped you? Is anyone using this large manifestation of Polishness abroad for promotion of Poland as a country? I keep on hearing that, you as organizers probably as well. The largest Polish parade, thousands of people, joyful, laughing, smiling, young, plentiful of plentiful organizations. It's such an impressive event that I believe that there have been only some mentions in the Polish TV and silence other than that. And that must be the grief which needs expressing today. And it's really worthwhile to ask why doesn't our homeland, why Poland doesn't make use of what you, you do abroad? Certainly, if this understanding of cooperation were there, if there were more profound analyses of how we could help one another. Now, let's say that I bow down deep before Janusz Kurtyka Foundation, because in this short time of our cooperation with them, there have been so many large and interesting events that made it through to various people, Polonia organizations, the youth, 
you would like the same to happen, for example, for the Constitution Day parade on the 3rd of May. For several years, when we are sent our proposals to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we receive financial support. It's not paying for the all costs, but that's definitely a form of financial support. Any financial support is important. Also with other events, we turn to the consulate and money is very important to us. Without money, we can't organize things. And for those who have never been to such a parade, I'd just like to add that this is really promotion of Poland and American media, promotion of Poland, not only in Chicago and around, but there used to be also interviews about Poles, promotion of Poles in American media. Today, it's not there because there is no money to promote Poland with such anniversaries. That's something that we've mentioned, that there is no positive use of Polishness of the Polish activity. What you do as an organization getting ready this uh, and organize all this black and white parade. Speaking of the American media, for many years there were either live broadcasts or others. Usually the Constitution Day parade received an hour of coverage. Then the media were getting more and more commercialized. And unfortunately, the option of having the parade ad in American media exceeded any financial capacity of our committee. So we are very glad that there is this Polish TV in Chicago, Polvision, that we have the Polonia media on Facebook and on YouTube, and that they broadcast the whole parade. And I'll be honest, it is watched all around the world because we even get information during the parade from Australia that it's being watched. And that's something fantastic. But I think that it's very important that we also come out to the American society. When we were receiving the books from Janusz Kurtyka Foundation, obviously we presented them to the American Polonia, who no longer speak Polish, especially the young generation. But we also had eager readers in the American circles. They asked us for these books. And that was a real reason to, to, to enjoy it, because if they went for the effort of reading what there is in this book, the vision and understanding of that history will change. Coming back to what we could do, well, our parade goes along the most beautiful cavalcade in Chicago along Michigan Lake. And at the end of it, there's this beautiful park. There is uh, the Blitzka Auditorium where you could have a big event, a big party after the parade with potential participation of all those who were in the parade, who watched it. And it happened so in 2009, didn't it? When President Lech Kaczynski was there, I remember it very well, a huge pomp where Americans and Poles were the great festivity, great concert. This is coming out to the American society how important it is and how uh, important. On the 1st of September, I don't know who in Poland purchased the whole uh, pages, so-called pages one in American uh, magazines. I'm going to this 7-Eleven popular coffee shops I read Chicago Tribune. You probably saw it, Doctor. 
page one incredible thing they're writing about us about poles i was surprised because it was the first time i remembered now it's ukraine that's also the moment when we're being promoted but before ukraine i've never seen anyone even mentioning us and you know it made page one war and i started to look what it was all about and poles bought the whole page one and that was really a bullseye the man i met the drinking coffee hey did you hear that there were poles and they were so brave and i said yes that's the moment come out bring those things and tell them to americans dr zhukovska has done it for many many years through books through promotion what's your experience when it comes to bringing our most beautiful history in in this fight you mentioned nato you mentioned what your husband did what's your experience in selling the, this positive selling of poles to the americans to american milieus i believe that americans think well about poles and speak well wherever we were anywhere with my husband it's always been friendly but with tongue in cheek there are so many national groups here i remember with our friends we always went with them to thanksgiving and she said you don't know what a horror the irish are do you know about those stories and i wanted somebody at the university to develop that book about america's five largest ethnicities i don't know 20 30 pages for each and let them write about their grudges to america the japanese and others and others then i believe against all those others we're really good we're really well here i've never heard people speaking negative things about poland rather with curiosity and those group meetings that's what you mentioned all those parades and stuff it's it would be good to have a polish weekend so that people could eat something see something now my point of view here is that poland should support books films videos and to make them page one so that everyone takes it into their hand that they browse through it put it on the shelf so that people know how proud we are with our constitution and how it worked in the world uh, uh when i said that joseph conrad was a pole what pole and i look into it and say yes he was um you always need to do it well there was this uh magazine culture avenue she shows polish culture abroad and every campaign every action is good sometimes waiting for polish sub financial support makes me feel shame you can organize concerts and charge money for them we can pay that's america that's canada and so forth it's not that we always need support perhaps i'm mistaken it's about poland to come out so that people knew that there was was so uprising what a great tragedy that was as i said earlier we believe that everyone knows it no of course they don't if you don't keep on repeating you don't show films videos nobody's going to know well there's at least one american who knows about the war in 1939 he landed at that coffee with you what is it like at your place with these initiatives are you really waiting well i let myself return to that uh, chicago parade i am a member of the bitch polakim jury to be a pole and one year the title of those works with thousands of children presented to us here to to, to warsaw was myself and my red and white life 
children wrote and drew and they used different subjects and i must say that this chicago parade was in all the works of polish children in the us in and around chicago where they can reach this place this is a testimony to the power of it if we repeat that a drop can break a stone break a rock this is how we can get two children through initiatives what is it like in the uk do we wait i believe we've been over pampered before a lot of money began to flow to the uk large amounts of it to the i said it earlier we were coping really well because we organized different runs initiatives even uh, cooperation with the polish catholic mission money are uh, donated in the church once a year went to different initiatives and institutions and that worked yeah people felt they were a part of it the quintessence is that people did good as a society as a community they felt they were responsible for that and most of those people who supported polishness in the uk helped there were many people who worked uh, for for charity well, I wouldn't like this money to stop, but it really pampered us and spoiled us. Parents should make sure that the Polish educational facilities work efficiently, that you don't wait for somebody to buy it for you, give it to you. I believe we have been pampered, although we keep on repeating that maintaining Polishness is part of our business because perhaps one day this money will run short. There's no political version that I'm presenting, but this money can run short and take responsibility for what we do if we feel we're Polish and we want to be Polish. Okay, the Chicago parade, there's the Pulaski parade, a gigantic thing in New York and New York Polonia. It's a big event that makes it possible to keep the young Polish people in this Polish uh, identity and pride. I've uh, experienced it for years that young people are opposed. How is it in Austria? What does it look like? Andrzej, you are close to sports. So do you have, do you have any initiatives? Initiative? Um, something that, would that uh, build the identity of the, the identity young of the generation young who have generation. never been to Poland. Um, the generation who have never been to Poland, perhaps. Uh, yes, uh, well, the money topic is a dangerous topic. But uh, indeed, I see this problem, the same problem. And uh, for many years, uh, there have uh, been this uh, claimant approach with regard to the Polish state. For instance, we send out uh, packages uh, uh, to sports events and there is just symbolic amount of one euro that needs to be paid and people do not want to uh, pay even one euro and they keep on saying, why should I pay? This is dangerous. And uh, I belong to a group of people who, does, who do not support uh, the uh, holiday for the Polish diaspora back in Poland. If we organize events of all sorts, they ought to be to be uh, done in such a way that they at least pay for travel themselves. Sometimes uh, there are events uh, that are fully paid for, and those are meetings for hundreds of people. Now, if you translate that budget for such type of an event for active, uh, for active, active uh, substantive activities within the framework of projects, then there's so much more could be done for that money. But going back to a question I had, when my children started to go into the Polish school at the embassy, I saw that um, we needed to extend a lot of care, to give a lot of care to that school, great school, wonderful head teacher, wonderful teachers, great uh, uh, place, uh, Carlsberg um, uh, College, where uh, Caesar's uh, children used to receive their education. but. Uh, there was a lack of uh, activity to the benefit of the school by the parents and so we established the parents council usually parents councils uh, are not registered but we registered our parents council as an association and within a year we had developed 
a budget and the, and, uh, the, uh, the, the, the budget that we currently have is the budget that is given to the entire budget of uh, the uh, Polish um, uh, consulates uh, re responsible for a diaspora. But this is quite a sizable budget, so we have been able to pay for uh, tutoring uh, for our uh, children when needed. We could uh, do some earthwork. We could uh, also um, buy some gifts for teachers on the teacher's day and so on and so forth. So it was done with a great benefit to everyone. And I saw that people were happy to do, but we simply needed to be more systemic. And I also noticed one important point to those people who are eager to do that. They are seen by as partners or by the school management and by other institutions, by the representative of the Polish institutions they perceive as partners. So this is a partner relation. and. Uh, uh, regardless of our education and to profession, we're treated on um, equal footing. These people do a lot, and um, this work is uh, irreplaceable, and um, we cannot go back to the old ways when the saying was, uh, oh, you're here, so uh, do whatever is needed. If you are not uh, necessary, I have no time to devote to you. Those, this, uh, those are the habits of the past. I remember in 2014 and in 2015, the consulate started giving money to different projects. So uh, there were, um, I think, uh, Mr. Sikorsky started that activity. Initially, I was very happy because I thought that finally, as an auto project manager, I will finally raise some funds. And indeed, for the first year or two, there were good projects that were being financed, and those projects were being reviewed and uh, the money were being dispersed in a military way. And uh, as at least in Austria, I saw this boom of activities, but very soon later on, I saw that some of the organizations uh, had deals uh, with uh, the uh, funding organizations. I do not want to uh, claim that anyone was doing anything in the Faris, but they started doing something behind the scenes, uh, uh, doing things behind the scenes like uh, husband, wife, and their son or a neighbor behind the scenes. So some organizations were registering. They were also registering as organizations. Then they were winning the money. Many times, although there was uh, no reporting done, there were the reporting was done upon breakfast and the annual report was presented at dinner. Ridiculous. So those shrewd people were capable of hammering out of ways of raising funds and uh, those th that money was easily available for them. And many of those ambitious people who were acting on the grounds of their free will and uh, were eager to act, they were not receiving any funding and so they withdrew. And I see now that and for me, this is so quite positive. What is uh, happening this year is that um, so many organizations uh, have uh, been liquidated, uh, whether, whether committees for the Polish diaspora matters. Uh, uh, for instance, at uh, different ministries, we used to have uh, plenty of potentiaries for the Polish diaspora. We now have one office, one competition that is determined by the uh, com commission. And of course, we need to learn to write applications. But I think it's more transparent these days. I think it's, um, it is the system that responds better to the needs of the Poles. We, as the Polish diaspora, need to learn how to raise funds. It's not that one has an idea, comes and gets the money. Some effort needs to be put. but. Uh, also, we need to, um, um, as far as the projects for the youth are concerned, sports is a great uh, springing board for patriotism. So, for instance, just think about the Ministry of Education. And the Ministry of Education in Vienna would like to have um, classes of the Polish language. And even if the Polish language is uh, introduced into a school, that uh, child will learn Polish, will perhaps speak Polish at home, but shall the patriotic spirit be transferred on to these children? Many times these children are attacked by the social media, by the mass media, and many uh, times those children are attacked uh, by the consumer by consumerism. But if there is a Polish-Austria um, football match and say a, a boy comes to school wearing red and white, and then there is a scandal, um, but if this has been, if this boy is liked, if this is a positive attitude, and if the, he is a good uh, student, then everyone loves Poland. Everyone says, ah, even if Austrians uh, 
uh, lose uh, the football match, they would say, yes, but you were the policy, were better football players. So it's it becomes something positive. It's non-verbal. There is no financing there, but it's something happening. So we, for nine years, have been organized running competitions. This is a cross-border run, one of the few in Europe, maybe in the world. I'm not sure. I don't know. Is anyone running from Warsaw to Chicago? But we run, yes, we run of uh, the Polish Hussars uh, Trail from Sturk and uh, Banjin. And this is a trail mixed uh, with um, a pilgrimage. Many of us uh, are um, Catholics, um, Christians, so we go to St. Mary's Shrines. We meet many uh, uh, young people on the way, and we have local runs. We run with wings, Hussars wings, then we run. Uh, then we do it this way and this year we're going to have the ninth edition so we travel through the czech republic and then on the czech border we start running again uh, following the trail of the sibirsky army who was uh, then marching to vienna and this is a beautiful place of polish identity the state of abraham castle this is the place where Jan uh, sibirsky the uh, third the king of poland used to live there was this is where the military council was held and uh, this is where he was, uh, um, he assumed command of the army and uh, we know what happened next. And then on the 9th of October, this is where the battle took place and he uh, came victorious. Uh, and um, yes, uh, but uh, how about the Austrian society? Anything about your activities in the Austrian mass media? Yes. Uh, and. Um, just wanted to add that many people from different countries take uh, a part in this run. This is really run. Usually 20 to 30 people run in this really run. And this year, after the pandemic, we started doing it the more hybrid way. But what is quite curious is that when we run across Austria and people, Austrians, see the Poles because we run with uh, uh, red and white flags and that uh, we are wearing Hussar's insignia and uh, people stop, uh, they hoot, uh, they wave their hands, they give us space. Uh, something you cannot possibly see on an everyday basis in Austria, but it is happening here. And this is a grassroots initiative. This is needed. Uh, no big support is necessary. Of course, if there is any support, it's nice when the consul or the madam ambassador would attend and um, 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 also um, greet the participants of uh, of such an event. And uh, talking about pilgrimages, um, Dr. Wutsia uh, Miroska Kopacz uh, uh, would uh, corroborate what is happening when pilgrims uh, are on the move. Uh, many of them are on the move for two days. So they're going to the shrine in the state of Indiana wearing uh, white and red colors. And many Americans are surprised to see thousands of people on site. There would be more than 10,000 poles, 10 to 12,000 poles on site, which is a matter of pride. No money is uh, needed to organize that. And it's happening in our community, is it not? Madam Doctor, of course it's happening. It's most beautiful tradition that has been practiced for many years now, but the pandemic uh, has somewhat curtailed it. But this year, the pilgrimage took place. It was most beautiful pilgrimage. The weather was great. And I should say that although we're not marching during the pilgrimage, but we attend the final Holy Mass, and we're so happy to see it. I'm a pedagogue. I'm so happy to see so many young people, so many youth are taking part in the pilgrimage. And here I would like to say, that there are two things that I would like to mention. Namely, we need to realize that these children and this youth who have who were born here or who came to the US as little children, they are more English speaking than Polish speaking. They rather speak English than Polish. Although there are many young children and the youth who attend uh, Polish diaspora schools in uh, the Chicago land area, we have approximately 50 Polish diaspora schools, which is a lot. And if we hear about 200,000 Poles in Austria, then of course the dynamic is very different here. 
and also the old Polish diaspora that is in the fourth and the third and the fourth third generation here. And uh, they are 100% English speaking diaspora. But we need to realize, and this is uh, where Wydaje mi się też, że do Ministerstwa Oświaty, Edukacji czy Spraw Zagranicznych. This is where we need uh, to, um, uh, to talk to the ministries of education and perhaps foreign affairs. Perhaps uh, we need to, to do, further disseminate the already existing books, materials and movies so that they either have uh, subtitles in English or dubbing in English. Or perhaps. Uh, as we're all saying right now, they, we have uh, the internet and the internet web, ga web games are ubiquitous. So perhaps we should utilize that. Perhaps we have to think how to talk about history and the facts of history. Of course, there are some uh, uh, history facts that have been kept uh, uh, talked about that is the, the day of the constitution, Powalski, the outbreak of World War II, and so on and so forth. But other facts are not being spoken about that much. And perhaps we might use the movie industry. For instance, um, the year 1920 would be a great opportunity. That is a movie uh, that uh, would be great to have dubbed in the English language. And if we think of it, we need to create uh, games and um, um, over the internet in the electronic form, something to do in the digital form uh, so as to present um, uh, history and facts. I remember a long time ago when I still lived in Poland, there were legends being published and those legends were published uh, bilingually. So one page was the Polish text and the other part was um, the English text. And it's a great way to write legends. And I think this is something that would have helped us a lot to disseminate knowledge about our history in the United States. Just let me add that. The, the knowledge of history in the US schools is close to zero. They really do not teach about history. Teaching about history is at a very poor level, and not many facts are being taught at US schools. And usually, this is something that is related to the United States of America. I used to work at an American school for 30 years, so I'm speaking on the grounds of my own direct experience. And history is not a favorite subject in an American school. So, in order to promote history, we need to do it in a very interesting way. And I think that. We had that debate, or we had that uh, presentation that was organized uh, by the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation. And um, 10 schools took part in that debate. All of them were from the Chicago area. And there was the author, and the author could talk about what he wrote about in the book. That was something wonderful. That was something effective with the youth. Just uh, think of your own youth days when we were um, learning history. Some of us liked it, some didn't. Uh, a lot depended on how history was being taught. Well, we will talk about uh, history later on because your husband was the one who fought and uh, he was writing letters, he was writing to newspapers, he was writing to journalists, he was the one who was uh, demanding history. And um, about uh, uh, being decent with regards to Poles. And uh, he was um, doing that as a Polish patriot, not being a, a Pole. And, um, and of course, undoubtedly, this is very important. Yes, indeed, um, uh, some people simply do not have knowledge. Uh, and um, it is important to, to, sp to sponsor these books on the internet in, uh, so that they are present, just like other um, nations do, who are fighting for their history. And there is this uh, wonderful movie by Andrzej Vajda. Uh, it was with English subtitles. He watched the movie and said, so how many people 
died in Katyn? Was it 100 people or 200 people? So we all think that uh, we think that everyone knows it, uh, but even we forget about things. So, so um, every uh, time we, at each stop, uh, each step, we need to be careful. We need to make sure that uh, as uh, um, much is being said as possible. Języka angielskiego, jeżeli idzie o szkolnictwo, zapytam panią Elżbietę, czy to rzeczywiście u was też jest ważne, bo tego chyba pokolenia... I'll ask Elżbietę, czy to bardzo really important, because that following generation, like in Chicago or New York, doesn't function there, but I noticed one thing which is, uh, which happens. There is this great event, the 100 day to the finish of a school party. There are hundreds of young people waiting for that. Uh, why do I speak of it? They know Polish lyrics, lyrics of Polish music. They sing it. I don't know all those songs. They sing them. So it means that they have to listen to it. Now, may I ask whether this Polish thing is so strong that the generation who was born know Polish from the songs, and it's a problem for them to learn history in any other language than English. Why is that so neck-breaking? Can it find any solution? What is it like in the UK? Please remember that, speaking of immigration to the UK, there's very old immigration, and it is a multi-generational thing. So we have this uh, bilinguality of the second and third generation. So learning Polish is a bit different style than teaching children who only arrived in the UK in 2004 or after 2004. These children by now are, well, adults. So we are lucky, or lucky slash unlucky, living on the other side of the English Channel, because we in the UK call this the English Channel. We have exams in Polish as a foreign language, and they are recognized by the British uh, English, because not, not in Scotland, by English schools and English universities. So the carrot that is there at the end of the path is very large if you go to Polish school. And if you go to that school for 14 years, at the end, you have incentive, you're incentivized to uh, pass the exams and they teach you history. There's plenty of history for your high school finals, cutting Andrzej Wajda's film and the historical uh, truth of cutting are there, not only those flagship facts like Constitution of the 3rd May are uh, regaining independence. There are also other events that children have to learn about. What am I aiming at? If we want to come out to the English people with the English knowledge that we have, historical knowledge that we have, by teaching our children and by making them sure of what happened in history, we make them people who will easily protest against all the historical falsehood. They would have arguments and knowledge, and they would say, no, it wasn't like that, it was otherwise. That's the goal, that's the purpose. We've got to teach this history, and generally, just like you mentioned, some like history, others don't, but the rewards at the end, the exams, are very important. And statistically speaking, the results of the um, our 
students, A with a star, are very high. Even 90% of our students get A with a star. And these are not children born in the, sorry, they are the children born in the UK. I'll privately say that all our children were bought in the UK and they all went through that system of education and they prefer to speak English when they talk one to another. And they went to Polish schools. They didn't really oppose it. Do they sing in Polish? That's beautiful what has been said here. Our children, and again, I can only use our own example for the anniversary of the Warsaw Uprising. We try to participate in it every year, singing the so-called forgotten songs. Our children sing them and know the lyrics, but the children, when, when we travel, for example, with our cousins, uh, the children don't know so much because ours grow in this climate. And a key role here is that not only of the teacher, but also of the family. If you sing Jean de Moya at home, the child's going to sing it. If you sing the Vassavien, the child is going to know it. We're talking about what really hurts us, but also about our successes, things that work well with us for years. And I'd like to ask you about your sense of being an ambassador. How do you feel in that role? And immediately, do you feel that these young people, those who will replace us soon, are they on the best path to replace us, to take our places? Andrei. I'd love to. It's hard to speak of yourself. Yes, I have that mission. I feel it. I was very closely connected to very brutal business, let's say, and I went to Warsaw from Austria and I returned when my children went to a Polish school. Those relations changed. I got down to bringing up my children, I realized that it's even more interesting that all business. But that's just my private opinion. All the things that I receive in return, looking at things, well, we moved to the Vienna run, and now these are different runs for children, for young people. More than 30,000 young people have participated in them, and we are paid more than 30,000 zloty to charity. And that gives a lot of joy. You're not getting it even at a very high position with perfect remuneration. That's a certain good you receive, and that's contagious. I believe I've caught the germ, at least to a certain extent, and some things today are really above me. Now, there's this historical figure, Artur Grodger, who is strongly underappreciated. Everyone knows him, but he's really treated badly, not only in Poland and Austria as well. So we have plenty of those niches, of those places that call for work, for ambassadors and their devotion, people who'd be passionate, but also determined to uh, do certain things, they won't look at how much money they're going to get. It's a bit of a pity when the people who only did things for their profits, they receive prizes because they have contacts. Well, okay, now the young generation, is it still in the airport or is it just on the runway to become an ambassador? A great role here is played by those meetings. There are those educational meetings young people meet abroad just in Austria. Well, I can see, as you said, Madam, that home plays a huge role, whether the national spirit is cherished at home and what the attitude is. It's simplest to use a specific system of morality, of ethics. It's something that works best, especially today. 
if this is something you move away from when everything is turning into all those shoddy qualities family for those young people is an especially important element they go forth and they show even if they can't share it verbally in polish cherishing polish culture they do it through their attitude their attitude would be able to impart a lot and yet there's one more important element there are those polish uh, milieus around churches there's the polish catholic mission we have our lady of kallenberg i encourage all of you to visit there polish catholic mission has five six thousand polish people meeting every sunday we don't have any other center that would allow such an exchange of information people meet and see that there are polish people around them with the clubs of gazeta polska in uh vienna we organized a run and elderly women grannies came with their great grandchildren children went running of course there were flags there were signs there were medals and everything they came to me and said look i've lived in austria for so long and now i felt as if i were in poland that's this sense that we give to these people and you can see that they desire it they need it they want it and to us on the one hand it's a positive thing and it's a duty on the other hand that's where we should go that's way to go and returning to all those projects i believe i would rather let me end on that note that money were not given to polonia if they were to be given improperly because we can cope abroad even without money andre says that it's hard to talk about yourself we'll be asking do you have this feeling of being an informal ambassador of poland abroad and what is it like from your perspective when we look at the young generation is this young generation well uh set is it ready for that duty i'd rather not talk about myself because being an ambassador to polish culture in my case only started here in the us when i started to work in chicago public schools where the notion of knowledge of poland was that it's an elderly woman in a headscarf. These were 1990s, that wasn't so long ago. And that little uh, horse with this rickety cart, I started working there in 92. These were the times that plenty of children, plenty of families began arriving in the US also the school where i worked was at least uh, every, had every other child from poland and then americans also started learning about poland what it is like we brought polish photo books from various cities and americans watching those were shocked that they'd be surprised and going like really is that what poland looks like because already at that time polish cities were beautiful so that was one thing but also this uh, association of polish clubs which i represent has been there for 95 years as an ambassador of polishness because actually every event that we organize is connected either to a historical or religious fact or to some custom and just to, to show you the day after tomorrow we organizing the polonia harvest festival with about 1500 people it's a day-long event we first have a patriotic program this year it's connected to the year of maria konopnicka and the title is after the holy mass that is the culmination of the day we show 
or the customs of Polish harvest festivals. Why do we do that? We do it primarily to uh, follow the tradition, but also to let the young generation learn it. There's this beautiful Thanksgiving Day celebrated in the US. Polish Harvest Festival is thanking God for the harvest. So we want to make people realize that. And we are very glad that Americans participate in these events, in these uh, observances, that they can also learn things. So I think there's a lot. There are many organizations and there are many individuals who are ambassadors to Polishness, to Poland. Is the young generation already on the runway? No, I don't think so. I'm very sorry to say so. But I think that obviously there are some young people who I'll honestly say I heard it with my granddaughter grandson who wanted Alexa to play a current Polish song that I didn't know and he knew it and he knew the lyrics. Well, he doesn't speak English, but he sang that song. So that's something that's a real joy for me as well. But it seems to me that as here in Chicago, Polonia began to move apart. There's no longer Jackowo, where a percentage of us lived, or this Polish triangle. No. Now people go to the uh, suburban areas due to our situation here. They also leave our state even. And that means that young people move away from this Polish culture. And that's why I emphasize that we've got to do things that would get their interest. And we've got to start with children start with young people and Elżbieta, like me is a member of the bitch polakiem competition jury i find it one of the most beautiful competitions because it brings together the polish diaspora from the whole world okay let's ask Elżbieta now about this feeling and also this runway Let's have this um, airport comparison. What is it like in the UK and how is it with you in person? Yeah. Can I call myself an ambassador of Polishness? I don't know. If as a teacher of uh, natural sciences, I'm now going to be into my 14th year, if I have the Polish ma map of Poland in my class, am I an ambassador of Polishness? This wooden Polish flag made for me by a non-Polish student. Isn't it a proof that I am one if students know what to present me with and I put it on the blackboard? Isn't it a proof that through my attitude, through even, even you know, without any deeds in my daily life, am I not a witness to Polishness? It's not for me to, to judge that, but just those two facts, perhaps they bring some witness to it. That's something for you to decide. Speaking of children, all the children who, in our case, in the case of my educational umbrella society the largest such organization in the uk gathering more than a hundred of schools altogether over twenty thousand students learning there do we bring up the ambassadors of polishness i say yes i can see that what we do makes sense and i can see the produce of what we do for charity and all we get is the joy is that we bring up the ambassadors of Polishness. We do whatever we can and the effect is fantastic. Closing, 
Well, let's ask the same question. Informally, we could say that this prize for Polish, for the Polonia, is a proof that you are an ambassador. And now uh, your feeling and this brief reflection about the generation you work with, we're talking about the Americans of Polish parentage extraction. Will they be ambassadors? It is with pride and joy that I have uh, listened to uh, Dr. Lucia. You have uh, been talking about most beautiful things. Let every one of us do whatever he or she can do, wherever we are, wherever we work. And uh, to say that people call me and ask her questions. Of course, it's on a very person-to-person -person level. People know something, but know too little. So happy people calling me when Poland is so responsive uh, to the events in Ukraine. So there's something being talked about among, Ukraine, uh, among Americans. And this is how we're being uplifted. Everyone speaks about it. So there are also many activities uh, about the youth, which is beautiful. I simply want to stay healthy. And there are so many more projects that I would like to run and uh, uh, to see so many books in the English language. So I admire what you do and uh, was very deeply moved by your activities. And uh, I'd, uh, I promised to say a few words about Vankovic because uh, soon we're going to celebrate an anniversary of his death. And uh, indeed, uh, we as ambassadors uh, need uh, to uh, we need to celebrate a year of uh, Melchior Vankovic. Uh, this is going to be with a benefit uh, both uh, to the Polish diaspora abroad and in Poland. And we need to have books. How about the Monte Cassino battle uh, book? We need to have it uh, in the English language as soon as possible. He, he was the author who wrote so much about Poland. Sometimes uh, you can, you can uh, about uh, his uh, early years, which were so most beautiful. So I would like his books to be very well known. And only the elites read, so to speak, but uh, the elites, uh, elites change the world. So um, some boys on the street do not uh, know about many things. So all I'm saying is that I would like to continue what I've been doing, because this is important. And uh, we all do whatever we can. And that is why we're here, which is a beautiful thing. And today we're talking about uh, Poland, about um, the Poles and the Polish diaspora. And I would like to say that perhaps the marking point of you being the ambassadors is that we have been talking for an hour and a half. We have been talking about uh, the Polish diaspora matters. And I'm proud that uh, there are people who are all over the world, all around the world, and I see many of them. And I'm fascinated. I'm highly motivated to talk and um, to talk and uh, speak about Poland and Poles the way you do. And I congratulate you on being the ambassadors of Poland. And I do hope that uh, our generation shall benefit from it. And uh, as Elżbieta says, uh, 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 new generations are coming up, so let's them benefit from it. So thank you very much. Thank you for your kind uh, thoughts and words. And undoubtedly, I do hope that we, as uh, the Polish diaspora in Poland, will be the one. And we will be able to build relations and links so that we have many more initiatives. So thank you ever so much. And I do hope that this is our first, but not the last, meeting. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, thus we have concluded the first day of the review, past and future. I would like to thank all the panelists and the moderators. I would like to thank our guests who are present here at the Sulevic Museum, and I would like to thank all those participants who have joined us online. I also would like to thank all the partners and organizations that have supported the today's event, and those are the following organizations. 
the competition for the uh, um, past and future competition and the and um, the publications have been co-financed within the framework of the project under the title the review past and future 2022 by the foundation Empiria and uh, the Polish uh, Post, uh, Polish Mail, and uh, by the PKL Polish uh, Bank. Uh, uh, the project Wolwich Cheny, that is the review of past and future 2022, the support has been given by the KGHM Foundation. Let us thank the sponsors and um, as far as the, the Polish diaspora and Polish abroad um, and categories consent in this debate that has taken place, they are part of um, a public task, the Seeds of History 2.0, Fields of Knowledge, and this project has been financed uh, by the Chancellor of the Prime Minister of uh, Poland within the framework of the competition, the Polish diaspora, uh, Polish diaspora and um, uh, Poles uh, abroad. And the debate at the threshold of uh, awareness on the uh, awareness about Polish historiography around the world was uh, around devoted to the report published by the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation. And this report was drafted within the framework of a public task, uh, the meeting point and the elimination of the deficit of uh, knowledge. Uh, that is the activity run by the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation in order to increase our influence on the memory policy. This project has been financed by the National Freedom Institute, the Center for uh, Civil Society Development, uh, using the funds of the government uh, program on the development of civil society organizations for the period 2018-2030. So let us thank the organizations. And uh, finally, the media patronage have uh, been extended by TVP History of TVP3, Warsaw, TVP3, Krakow, the Polish Radio 24, the uh, Polish Radio RTC, Doszecze, the Gazeta Krakowska, uh, the JPL, Historicon.pl, Historia.org.pl, and our media partner is uh, the blogpress.pl. Many thanks. And by this, I would like to invite you to join us on the second day, that is tomorrow, and we're going to start our meeting at 11. Tomorrow, we're going uh, to have um, a very important ceremony of the presentation of the Janusz Kurtyka Award and also the Past and Future 2022 Awards in many different categories. So tomorrow, we are going also to uh, see the performance uh, called uh, The Unbroken by Nebukolczycki and also a possibility of uh, seeing the uh, Josef Pietrzewski Museum here in Solyovic, which is hosting us. So you're more than welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you and goodbye.